All right, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm Vincent Caldera. I'm the CTO for uh, Red Hat in Asia Pacific and Japan. And I'm very pleased today to have with us today uh, Varun from Indigo Airlines. Uh, Varun uh, actually has quite a number of hats. He has the architecture, the digital innovation, as well as the cloud engineering uh, capability within Indigo. We're going to focus today on our ongoing journey uh, around observability and especially how we've started to unify business and technology observability within Indigo Airlines systems. So when we started working together, the thing that really struck me with Indigo is obviously we have a, you know, a market player here which is already dominant in India, which is obviously a huge market in terms of uh, you know, aviation right now. But we are also looking at a market that is going through a tremendous growth. We're sharing here with, sorry, we're sharing here with some statistics. Uh, today, Indigo Airline is, of course, the leading provider on the domestic market share with more than 60% uh, uh, traffic. Uh, but also, if you look globally, it already handles uh, a quite significant portion of daily traffic and it's already the seventh largest uh, uh, airline in terms of daily departure handled. What is really, really fascinating is looking at the India market today and the future. If you look at the order book in terms of aircraft that Indigo has already committed to purchase, we are looking probably at a four to five times growth in the coming years on this market. So I'm going to kind of start on these facts and really looking at this situation from an Indigo perspective, and in particular the IT platform. Varun, can you share with us some of the challenges and opportunities you have in terms of technology uh, to basically handle this growth? Yeah. So I, from from opportunity perspective, I think uh, uh, while we were doing this planning for the digital disruption, and the growth that you just mentioned, right? So we, we had an accelerated digital transformation roadmap. And this, this means that we had to handle this growth Vincent just spoke about. But then an accelerated digital transformation roadmap actually adds to complexity in terms of the hybrid footprint that you continue to live with, right? Because uh, as you transform, you'll start with cloud. So we, we started our cloud migration journey. But then it, it also means that on the app landscape, you will still have monolith apps while you, you adapt to native platforms, which is OpenShift, which we did uh, two years back. Uh, from, from, from an opportunity perspective, we were actually getting rid of the technical date, but we were actually running cloud native platforms, and at the same time, we were running proprietary technologies. And our, our, our vision statement and mission was to actually adapt more open source as, as much as possible. While all of this was happening, uh, from an observability standpoint, uh, we, we had to observe everything, right? So if we were running, let's say, 100 applications on legacy, on monoliths running on infrastructure, which is legacy, still even if it is migrated to cloud, we had to observe the new capabilities which we have built on OpenShift. That was the real challenge. And that's where we, we decided that it's an opportunity to create an architecture pattern with Red Hat, which can enable unified observability for us. Absolutely. So. I mean, it's a very good point, and this is what I see as well with many customers adopting new architecture, in particular microservices. The amount of distributed tracing that now you are subject to uh, is a game changer. You, 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 know, you suddenly see a multiplication in terms of number of events, just basically understanding the causality, causability between you know, traces, your log, your system metrics becomes a huge challenge in itself. So of course, what you can do is you can uh, deal with the problem later, but then probably the cost of actually undoing and implementing observability across your application stack is going to be high. Or what we started to do with Indigo is, at the start of this journey, try to come up with a standardized way uh, for people to build an instrument application with telemetry. So basically, this problem doesn't just extend and grow as we go along. So we started to look at how do we leverage open telemetry for unified observability. And maybe here, uh, 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 Varun, can you share with us specifically in terms of challenge, looking at business observability and IT observability, 
what does it mean from your standpoint in terms of you know, what problem are we trying to solve here? So uh, we actually divided this into phases uh, from an observability standpoint. Our first thing was to lead to, to lead unification for observability. That was very important because, as I said, while we were modernizing applications, we still had legacy. And we had to unify observability across these platforms because some of them were built to service uh, airline operations. I'll take an example. I, I heard somebody in Commons gathering earlier talking about using Red Hat Fuse at the same time using three, three scale for API. We have both. So we are running an integration built on Fuse while we have modernized a part of a part of that service which is running on OCP. Now for us to observe that end-to-end -end service unified observability is the key, that was phase one. Phase two was to embed some of the data analytics that we have around our operations. And, and it has nothing to do with telemetry data, but all of this is very important. And we thought if, if we are able to create a data mesh architecture where a telemetry data coming from unified observability can be correlated with operational data coming from our airlines, uh, airline operations, uh, we can actually make a lot of insights and a lot, lot of observability into our operations and not only our IT infrastructure. So that from that vision, we, we thought it's important that we do unified observability, that's step one. And then we, we decided to work with Red Hat and an upstream project, uh, Open Telemetry, right? Because uh, from, from our perspective of landscape and our journey, we thought we would modernize more and more on OpenShift on containers on cloud native. But then we will create an observability pattern that, that, that enables us to hook into any data, which is anywhere, right? Uh, at the same time, I heard somebody talking in the morning, AI is anywhere, right? So AI should be anywhere, but then for us to enable AI to be anywhere, we have to have data everywhere, right? Which is everywhere uh, today. Uh, in, in our scenario as well, we have moved applications to SaaS. We have moved applications, all databases to PaaS. Uh, these are some of these, some of the observ observability around SaaS and PaaS comes natively using the platforms that you are, you are moving them to. But then for infrastructure where you are moving these applications to your own cloud, you need a open telemetry kind of a solution. So that was the kind of pattern or, or architecture we were trying to build. Yeah, th thanks for sharing. So, uh, you know, I think w what this is a great example of as well is an example of co-engineering between Red Hat and customer. Actually, when we started the journey, we were using the tech preview. I mean, at that time, it was called distributed data collection, probably, and it, it is changed now. It's, it's called the Red Hat build of, of uh, open telemetry. But essentially, what we did is, at the very early stage of productizing telemetry, we worked with a number of customers across the globe to get inputs on how they actually want to use this technology. And so for us, getting feedback from the likes of Indigo in terms of making the technology usable is very fundamental. Now, just a, a, a few key points I want to share on this in terms of open telemetry. First thing is, it's a hugely successful project within the CNCF, probably one of the most successful today. Uh, the last time I checked, more than 11,000 companies across the globe actually contributed some code to open telemetry. So that tells you how much adoption and willingness to build standards for telemetry is actually happening in the industry. If you are still using proprietary solution to handle observability, I really beg you to reconsider and very, very quickly start to look at open telemetry implementation. I think to me it's fundamental. The other aspect is, why is it better for you? If you think about architecting for observability, sure, open telemetry gives you the building blocks. You can handle traces, logs, metrics, all in one stack. That's good. But very importantly is how the project is built for you to leverage the declarative power of Kubernetes to build an open architecture for observability that is repeatable and standardized within your environment. What do I mean by this? when you declare observability capability within your platform, whether it's a receiver or exporter or a processors, you can just do this with a YAML file, and then you're all happy. Everything gets deployed on your cluster. Right? So it's very easy to scale, and also to, you know, we've heard a lot as well, is the developer job, please. They don't actually want to have to solve this problem every time they deploy a new application. Right, so, so that's really fundamental in terms of what we're trying to achieve here. Now, sharing with you how we actually approached it, 
we actually started with a proof of concept, initially with Indigo, which was really focusing on instrumenting a number of applications and really unifying this with OpenShift logging. So maybe, Varun, can you share a bit with, on the choice of application and why this is significant for Indigo as a proof of concept? Yeah, so from a proof of concept uh, uh, pattern perspective, we decided that we'll pick up an application which is using a bit of Red Hat integration today. So the first block that you see there, Flight Search, uh, it, it, it comes from our booking platform, which is a SaaS platform, but Flight Search is hosted on our three scale uh, gateway on OpenShift. So that is what we picked and we said, okay, we'll observe it uh, using uh, the open, open telemetry pattern. The second, we, we did a sample application, 100% uh, uh, developed on OpenShift. And we said if we were to use the entire uh, capability of OpenShift and deploy an application, let's pick up that. That's the sample app. And the third is a, is a monolith which, which we have been using for many years, which is running on Windows Server, nothing to do with OpenShift. So these are the three applications that we picked. And we did a POC with OpenTelemetry. And the idea was to actually see if the pattern works right for us and if, if what are the challenges so that we can mitigate them with the archi with, with architecture 2.0 working with Radar. And I think we have achieved a lot of learnings from, from this POC and we were able to see a lot of observability across all these three use cases. Yeah, f thanks for sharing. So uh, again, back in time we had to use manual instrumentation mostly for the POC, but the good news is increasingly uh, instrumentation can be done automatically without code change as well. So if you start to look today, I mean, Java, Golang, like you, you will start to find many uh, automatic instrumentation libraries that are available. So the good news is if you actually start this journey now, likely there is a chance for you to have probably less, you know, work to do on the application side to do even kind of code change or, or manual instrumentation. And we foresee in the future that will become really painless. So let's move now to, obviously, the, the, the key achievements and benefits from the business perspective. Varun, from your, from your standpoint, what are some of the key benefits now and in the future? For now, I think, as I said, the first step or the first phase would entail uh, ensuring that observability for the various personas. So uh, if it's a support engineer looking at just availability and performance, he can look at unified observability from that perspective. If it's a developer persona, he looks at, OK, what, what I need to do in terms of the tracing and the log, logs that are being generated. And then if it's a data scientist persona, he looks at, OK, what, are the, what is the data that I'm generating? In a nutshell, unified observability is phase one. But then uh, from a pattern perspective, we decided that we will also ensure that we build a data virtualization layer which can bring all my operating data into, into a single pane of glass, right? So that I can then unify my telemetry data coming from observability and my operating data from the data virtualization layer and see if I can build something on that. We have not still done it. We are working with it. We are working on that with Red Hat. Uh, that's point two. But then point three, which is very, uh, which we, which I personally believe is, is something in the future is if we are, if we are able to use this telemetry data, observability data, when we are writing data models on my operating, operating data. So uh, I think there are a lot of insights which telemetry, telemetry data provides. And then there's any which way is your business operating data has a lot of insights, which is coming from your data warehouse. You can gel both of them and create a pattern which, which helps you uh, uh, run operational efficiency in an airline, and that's, that's what we believe. Yeah, awesome. Uh, actually, this, this made me remember the first time I think I discussed this with your CIO. We came from the point of view of looking at the AI trends, right? Let's say you have two disconnected systems for telemetry. You've got your business system. They know a lot about your customer pattern. And then you have IT system who understand a lot the load, the performance of your application. Now, if you are going to start training AI separately, is it going to be as efficient at getting both the business data and, and, and predictability patterns from your customer load together with IT? Of course not. I can take an example. So if you're if you're booking engine, uh, which you're observing, right, hosted on, let's say OpenShift, it's an API gateway, you're getting too many API hits. You actually know there's a lot of booking which is happening on the infrastructure side. And, and, and typically your data, which is your booking data, would actually reflect it. If you merge both of them, you actually know whether your systems are scaling up from an infrastructure side. But then on the operation side, you, you have a lot of insights on why it is happening, what is happening, 
Uh, there's a lot of data models that you can create. So this is a perfect example. So we come really to future roadmap and what we are doing and working on right now. So what you see here is, uh, generally the way I describe it is kind of like a two-speed architecture. Uh, telemetry data, of course, needs to be used in real time by your engineer, by your operations team, because they need quick insight and predictability to uh, manage their system. But at the same time, we want to keep having an option of uh, collating all this data into a place for the ability to assess long-term pattern. So what you see here, and I'm not going to go into all the detail of the component, you'll see kind of a number of open source uh, components that we've been uh, leveraging to build this, what we call a data mesh pattern. But what's there to remember is, in addition to the data collection that we have described so far, we are kind of overlaying an architecture that helps us to aggregate this data and to keep a long-term memory of it in a very efficient and scalable manner. So we use cloud-native technology, in particular cloud-native storage, as well as technology such as Apache Iceberg, which is a, a very useful product that allows you to index data uh, at scale for petabytes of data across uh, cloud storage. And that becomes a foundation for future maybe AI ops capability or future modeling capability you want to build. That's correct. Uh, disruption management is one use case that you see on the chart. We believe this future roadmap can enable it because we will have a lot of insights coming from the data mesh architecture coupled with telemetry. And we can enable uh, automated disruption management in the future. Absolutely. So if you are interested in this approach, just to signal, we are actually building this blueprint in open source as well as is typically the case with Red Hat. So uh, this collaboration, actually, we, we have just released what we call a, a community pattern of data mesh, which is uh, available as a, as a code repo. So if you are interested, you can actually uh, contact us uh, or me directly so it's easier. And uh, I will point out to a repository where you can just deploy and, and, and try this out. Thank you so much again for being here.